Hey there humans, it's Timothy here with the Way of the Road. One of, if not the most overlooked and underutilized pieces of equipment in the gym is, in my eyes, the Swiss ball. Today I'm gonna to show you why and how to use a Swiss ball and the three basic positions that I start anyone out on this ball in. So why do I think you should play with the Swiss ball? Well, another name for the Swiss ball is the stability ball. It helps us with the stability the stability of our joints. A lot of reasons for a lot of injuries and issues with the body is lack of stability. Training on the Swiss ball, with the, when we challenge our stability, the body learns to therefore become more stable and it tightens the nuts and bolts of our joints so that the next time they get challenged with unstable territory, they're a lot more stable. Why I notice this the most with how much it's helped the health of my knees. Another reason to train on the stability ball is how much it helps to soften our reflexes. A lot of the times people, when their balance is challenged and they fall over, it's not from the initial fall, it's the overcorrection. When they try to correct their balance, they, they reflex too hard the other way and then fall over the other way. So what we do when we train the stability ball on the Swiss ball is we, we fine tune those reflexes to be much more precise. So if we are unstable, we flail the limb or whatever it is to, to find that balance center once again and give us those cat-like reflexes. This helps to correct a lot of the imbalances in our body, helping with our posture. It also helps with the connection to our core and to anchor ourselves into the posterior chain. 13, 14, 26, 27, way! Joshua, new record! Now I've got three positions for you to work on today that will help with everything that I've just said. So the first position I like to start people with is to get familiar on all fours on the ball in a kneeling position. So with the toes on the floor, put your knees and you wanna have a bit of a gap so that you can kind of hug the ball with the knees with this compression force. And then you wanna make like a, a square with the two hands and the two knees and just slowly rock off your toes so that you're on all fours like this. And you might squirm about for a bit, rolling the ball, trying to stay balanced. And then eventually you want to shift the knees forwards a little bit, walk the hands up the ball onto the thighs until you can stand kind of upright on the knees on the ball. Now this position has really helped me with my knee health as well as anchoring into the glutes, into the back chain. It's hard to be anterior dominant when you're in this kind of hinge position on the ball. Now once you're able to stand upright on your knees on the Swiss ball, I like to work through kind of two or three positions. So I'll go from here and I'll go drop down into this kind of Caesar Japanese sitting position with my bum on my heels. And then driving into the shins to lift back up. Why this is so helpful for the knees is it just really helps to awaken all the muscles that are around the kneecap, the back of the calf, the quad in this stretch position and starts to engage them, give them circulation and just give good lubricant all the while, it has the forgiving elements of the Swiss ball because it is soft and malleable. It's not like a hard floor or a hard surface which is fighting against the joints which makes us lock up. It allows that little bit of wiggle room. We call it the feather barrier where it's not overly intense but it's still working at the same time. So working between kneeling on the shins and driving it down to upright. This is kind of the main position I start with and then I also like to work on some hinges as well. So kind of forward fold, show your side on, forward fold in so that we're anchored into the glutes here whilst we're trying to remain balanced at the same time. And then so kind of glute, squeeze the glutes, stand up, hinge forwards, don't rush it. And you wanna spend about somewhere between three to five minutes on the shins and the knees here. And you can also explore this kind of front stretch position out here as well. If you want to level up or make any of the positions any harder, you can start to add rhythmic bounces to it as well. So this next position we're going to do is generally easier than the kneeling position, but we can ramp up the difficulty to make it far harder. And it's one that most people have kind of probably played with, but they've not realized that if they do it regularly, they can get some real good physical gains from this position. And that's to just sit on the Swiss ball. Many of you might have had wives or girlfriends that have had babies and they use, a, most people out here, they go, oh, my wife had one when we had a child, you know, to, to sit on. So you might have one at home that's deflated, you can pump it up. And then we're just gonna sit on it. 
Now what you can do is use your heels if you need to in the beginning to stay balanced or you can use your hands near your bum but as you get better at it you're going to start to lift the leg and try to keep your kind of we call it the transverse abdominis the TVA engaged the, the zip up your belly try and get the shins to parallel to the floor now to make this harder you can shift the hands further back so we're kind of scoop in this scoop position and you can really work your cat reflexes here as the body is shifting side to side we, this is a really good organic natural workout for the core rather than just crunches and sit-ups it's naturally finding our weak spots what happens with the swiss ball it's a ball that can go in any direction and what it's going to do is it's going to find our weaknesses and it's going to test the boundaries of the weaknesses where we're strong we're stable and we, we can fight that bit easy where we're weak that's where the ball is going to highlight for us so when we're in this position rocking around side to side we're getting this nice natural reflexive muscle firing rather than just a, a normal contraction it's like a reflexive firing which helps to to soften the muscles and to work them and then for the extra for the hardest challenge with this we can go straight back as well for this you want to keep your eyes on the horizon if you drop your head back that's near impossible for me anyway maybe you can do it but head eyes on the horizon and then lift the toes off Once again, you want to play in the sitting position for about three to five minutes. Now, last but not least, we've got the prone on our belly position. So for this, you just want to set up kind of the ball just below your belly button and then fall forward, kind of flop over the ball. You can use your fingertips on the floor. I'd say use your fingertips more than your toes. So lift your toes off, but let your, you don't need to lift your legs right up just yet. And then just on your fingertips and then when you're ready, lift the fingertips. If your fingers want to keep touching down, that's okay. The body's still working. And then you want to think about anchoring in your glutes so you're not just completely relaxed here. The glutes are slightly active just to help support the bottom of the spine. And then you want to exhale out of your stomach and then breathing into the upper back, top of the ribs at the back here so that the the core is engaged and we're able to still breathe into the ribs and the stomach can stay flat while we're on it. And then we can start to lift our head using the muscles of the spine and lift the legs as well, taking off like this. But in the beginning, to you comfortable, you want to start really low to the floor, low center of gravity. And as you get more comfortable, your reflexes become more relaxed and more harmonious you're then able to lift up and take off like this. You want to do this position for somewhere between one and three minutes so as not to overdo it. So this really helps with all the muscles that help us with good posture around the spine to lift up and to get into the posterior chain, anchoring to the glutes as well. So those are my favorite three positions to introduce anyone to the Swiss ball with. Most people can do each position of them in some form or another. There are many other positions that you can do with the Swiss ball. If you're interested in checking that out, in my School of Biomechanics, link below, I've got, I don't know, 10 or so different positions with timers and everything going off. So you're interested in that, check that out below. If you like this video, please give it a like. It helps me out, it helps with the algorithm. And if you wanna see more like this, let me know in the comments below and we can mix it up so it's not just rope flow, we can do some more of the biomechanical alternative practices as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.